coming up on Fox News at 9. Hear more from residents about why it's more than this derailment that's frightening. It's a holiday rush. I'm Taylor Mitchell and coming up, find out what you need to know about your last minute Thanksgiving shopping. With this technology, it can take places like this stretch of downtown and turn it into this on the map. Whether you're into event planning, music, or you just want to make some coffee, the Ember is always looking for people to come and help. What do people in town think about the Adrian Peterson suspension? I'm Taylor Mitchell and coming up, find out. Police say they still don't know why Pearson was found here, but they continue to search for clues that will bring them answers. You can teach English to a new American population. You can become a barista. You can even help put on productions at one of the oldest community theaters in the country. Crews are on scene to clean up this mess. The Minnesota Department of Transportation says you can't expect intermittent lane closures as they try to get things back to normal. It's the next generation of maps. I'm Taylor Mitchell and coming up, find out how one company in Fargo is adding a new dimension to map making. Even though he says you shouldn't be worried, people say they're being more careful about where and how they shop. Overall, when people here heard her speak, they were very inspired by her story. As rail traffic increases across North Dakota and Minnesota, some local residents are saying more trains, more problems. I think it's scary over the last few years. I think the trains have been more and more into uh, traffic here and I think the hazards have gone up. At around 6.30 a.m., a train heading from Grand Forks to Minneapolis had 32 cars derailed just west of Wadena. Officials from Burlington Northern Santa Fe say the tankers were empty. The others were primarily carrying sugar products. It's a concern, and you know, you wonder if that would have happened at an intersection and there would have been people there. You know, that's kind of scary. BNSF officials are still investigating the cause of the derailment. Residents fear the potential fallout from these types of incidents, especially ones that come with explosions and fireballs like the derailment in Castleton last year. With schools being close to the tracks and a lot of public here, it's just, it's a lot of concern to everybody. Officials from the Ottertail County Sheriff's Office say it was lucky that there weren't any hazardous materials, but residents of the nearby towns aren't completely comforted. This time we're lucky. Next time, who knows? Crews are on scene to clean up this mess. The Minnesota Department of Transportation says you can't expect intermittent lane closures as they try to get things back to normal. In Ottertail County, Taylor Mitchell, Fox News. Hey, now this is the tricky part. Mary Hochul has always had a passion for helping people, and she really loves coffee. How do these two passions meet, and how can you combine them? Well, here we are at a nonprofit coffee shop. Mary and her husband Josh have always dreamed of opening a coffee shop together, but this one has a twist. At their shop called the Ember, profits from their drinks, which run around two to three dollars, are donated to different nonprofits in the Grand Forks community. Our mission statement is to change the world through coffee, music, and the arts. The coffee shop is completely volunteer run, and most are here by word of mouth. Everything I do here, and the money that we bring in is going to something good and helpful. They buy the coffee from Eurasia Cafe. The company donates parts of its proceeds to numerous global causes, including fighting human trafficking in India and HIV AIDS. So it's just a great way to like give back, and I really like coffee, so kind of my two favorite things rolled into one. They also host events every weekend. People can watch musical acts, live paintings, and they're hosting their first storybook reading on November 14th. It's the most fun volunteering position I've heard of. Whether you're into event planning, music, or you just want to make some coffee, the Ember is always looking for people to come and help. Our passion for coffee and for our community and for people have all come together. And it's that passion that keeps them going. In Grand Forks, Taylor Mitchell, Fox News. This is our main source for building the 3D map. Fargo's campus of here, Anokia Business is heading up the company's efforts to create the next generation of maps. Working with the car with all the connected uh, sensors in order to make that a safe routing experience but a much more efficient one as well. The 3D maps created by the company are on the cutting edge in map technology. These maps, they say, are primarily being created so that cars can essentially pilot themselves. Highly automated driving is what they call it.
anticipate where those things are so that the car can process all that information and anticipate where those, uh, where those obstructions could potentially be. Employees drive across the country and, and the world in special cars in that have middle. cameras to and collect data. All the information data, gets sent back second. here to Fargo, a big step up from the Polaroids they used to use. Now as we move forward and go to the 3D map, it's really taking a lot more detail in that map experience and using that to create a much more accurate and precise map. With this technology, it can take places like this stretch of downtown and turn it into this on the map. We're here at the panoramas really quick. By creating these maps, they say it has the potential to lead to safer conditions on the road. It can potentially reduce fatalities and traffic accidents. The 230 people employed by here in Fargo will have a big hand in making that happen. It could have a huge future impact on, on a society, and that's, that's cool, and we're doing that uh, all right here in Fargo. Taylor Mitchell, Fox News. For some, Thanksgiving can be a lonely time. I'm far away from home right now. My family lives over in the Sox Center area, and I wasn't even going to celebrate Thanksgiving. Two more head churches, St. Joseph's Catholic and Trinity Lutheran Church, came together to host a free meal at St. Joseph's in Moorhead. Whether homeless or lonely, everyone is welcome to come and enjoy some company in the traditional Thanksgiving meal. It's a holiday where there's only one day off and um, a lot of people are home alone. Volunteers were there from the early hours in the morning to help cook and serve the meal. I'm here more for selfish reasons. I just, I'm doing this for me. So I wanted to help. I wanted to be useful and want to be in the kitchen. This is the 20th year the churches have hosted the dinner. They say this year's is busier than those of the past. Well, this is more people. He, he even verified it. And I, we're by the front door, so we see people coming and going. More than 500 people came out here today to celebrate the holiday. People even got to see some familiar faces. It was nice meeting people that you haven't seen in a while. They also put together about 500 plates of food to deliver to people not able to come to the church. The people that are home alone, the people that deliver their meal, it might be the only person they see today. Even though it might not be able to replace a family dinner, it can still help. It's kind of sad, but yet, you know what? It makes it feel like home. A surrogate home for hundreds this Thanksgiving. Taylor Mitchell, Fox News.